I'm partnering with John Butler because we work together in this whole field of new energy pendulums. And since we have, I'm letting him wear the walkabout and I'll talk from here. And I'm using my own computer, so we'll have to see how this works because he doesn't have a clicker here. Okay. So basically, this talk, usually I call Egyptian and scientific energy pendulums. Uh, but today, I, because I have John to work with, to support me, we're just going to focus on energy pendulums. Okay, now, let us start with your dowsing protocol as practiced in the English-speaking world. What do you think dowsing is about? Asking questions, getting yes and no answers. Well, the French call this mental dowsing. Mental dowsing. And if you meet someone from France or Italy, or I met a woman from Argentina, and she said, what's dowsing? I said, do you use a pendulum? And she said, yes. I said, what do you call it? And she said, radiathesia. <laughs> so in the non-English speaking world, they do radiathesia. And if they do healing, it's called radionique. R-A-D-O-N-I. It's called, it's like radion. It's radon. It's energy. Okay, now. They think, they say mental dowsing, you can influence the answer. Between 1900 and 1980, engineers and scientists in France, Germany, Italy, Swiss, Belgium, and Russia worked together on developing this alternative protocol called scientific radiothesia. And how many of you want any of Alicia's courses and workshops? Alicia Aritam. Well, that's what she talks about. It's what I'm talking about scientific radiothesia. Okay. These French radiothesists were trained in physics and mathematics, geometry, and a lot of them were uh, in early days electrical engineers. And they developed pendulums and other tools that operate by your command. So the whole thing about energy pendulums is you command them. And the basic commands are emit, E-M-I-T, and detect, D-E-T-E-C-T, -E -E emit and detect. Now, all the books were written in French, and most have never been translated into English. Uh, Robert Gilbert and Ibrahim Karim have attempted to translate these books into English. Well. Um, it's a bit challenging to figure out what they're talking about because the French words and vocabulary have very little English equivalent. So you sort of have to get into it and get the flow of it and once you learn how to read it and use them you can figure out what they're saying. But if you just look at Google like how does pendulum translate on Google? Well the French word for pendulum is pendule, P-E-N-D-U-L-E -E, and on Google it tells you it's a clock. <laughs> That's equivalent, they know the words, okay. So they have a special vocabulary. Now, these books were translated into Russian and Polish, which is how Alicia Aritan had access to them, because she's from Poland. And in England, I work with a man from Poland, and he's read them out in Poland, and he sells the same pendulums that Alicia sells. They get them all from Poland. Their pendulums come from Poland. And uh, so I buy from him. You can buy them here from Alicia. There's a man in Vancouver named Chris Gorodznik. Runs a website, confining mine. Guess where he's from? Poland. <laughs> so the early Egyptian pendulums, the only people who carried it forward were these Polish people. Okay. Now at the ASD in 2010, here, uh, this man came from Argent no, yeah, Argentina, and he was Russian. He was a Russian shaman, and he was selling all the same pendulums as Alicia and Bogdan. And I said, how did you find out about these things? He said, I was Moses Moishi in a past life, and I was in Egypt. <laughs> I go, okay. Anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay. 
Now, the basis of modern physics is about energy. And when energy is pulsing slowly, it manifests as matter. So we're all pulsing slowly enough, so you're all manifested here today. If you vibrated faster, you'd disappear. Everything has a frequency it resonates at. Now, the energy pendulums, and I'm going to move this over here, get my next slide up. Energy pendulums, they developed them based on the energy of shape and materials. And I, on the energy of shape and materials, okay. Now in French, this is called en de form. Well, we're still on that one, okay. En de form. How many of you can read or speak French? What does en to mean? O-N-D-E. O-N-D-E. It means wave. Wave. So every form, each form emits waves and waves of frequencies. So you can look at a pendulum or an object and look at its shape, its form, and you can predict, if you get to know this, what frequencies it emits. Okay? Now, in scientific radiesthesia, the observer just holds the pendulum and says, please emit. If you don't need the energy, what happens? Nothing. Nothing. If you need it, it will spin. You'll resonate with it. How do you know when it, you've got enough? It stops. So what does it, your left brain do meanwhile? Have a vacation. Yeah. It does its thing based on its material and its shape. Okay. And they develop devices to measure the frequencies emitting from these pendulums. And I have one called the virtual comb, which I'm not going to talk about today, but you can look on the website, uh, sort of. Ibrahim uh, Karim has a video, or Robert Gilbert, on the virtual comb. It measures frequencies. It's called virtual comb. In French, it's called cone fictive. But the French is all in French. Now, quite a few people can see the energies coming out of these pendulums and the changes in the energy fields of the person being treated. And one of these people is John Butler. He can see the energy coming out of the pendulums, and that's why he's here today. As I show you the pendulums, he can, he's going to talk about them. He could talk. Okay. Now, the colors, the frequencies. In radiothesia, these are the colors. This is a bit difficult. I don't have a clicker. Okay. This is difficult. Maybe I should put that thing on. Okay. All right. We know the rainbow colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Those are the colors that are usually assigned to the chakras. Okay. But there are these other frequencies on the dark side. Infrared. Now, you can buy infrared pads. They have uses in uh, ultraviolet. You can get a device that will kill flies and emits ultraviolet. Uh, white, black, and this energy called negative green. In French, it's called gris, G-R-I-S, gray, because they saw it as gray energy. And negative green is a kind of radiation. And you have to be careful with negative green because you can overdose on radiation. And the man who did most of the work, the Frenchman, Chaumaret, with negative green, he died not of radiation poisoning, but of desiccation. He mummified himself because negative green is what was in the, they mummified it. That's what was in Tutok Amun's tomb. They all died from negative green poisoning. Okay, now. Domes emit, okay, oh, this one here, this one here, up on the, their higher harmonic of gold, is it another octave? And how do you find higher harmonic of gold? You hold something gold. So it's a higher octave, and quite a few of these pendulums emit this higher octave, higher harmonic of gold. And it creates a wonderful golden atmosphere. Why do saints have golden halos? It's a higher frequency. Higher frequency. They're emitting higher harmonic of gold. And when people looked at them, they said, gee, look at the golden light. So with some of these pendulums, you can create that same golden light around yourself. Okay. 
The other thing, coming back to desiccation, have you heard of the incorruptible saints? You should go. There's a place I go to in Italy, this island, this island, and uh, St. Julius Christianized it, drove out the dragons and the snakes in 367. He's buried in the crypt. He's in pretty good shape. Why? Why did he never deteriorate? Because sacred space emits positive, negative green. And if you spend a lot of time there, you mummify yourself. So when you die, you never deteriorate. So these energies, so negative green is important. Okay. Okay, now what? I'm sort of getting. Okay, okay. This is shapes. Pyramids emit negative green. Pyramids, pyramids emit negative green. So if you put a pyramid on your head for a long time, it's not a healthy thing to do. Domes emit negative green. Domes are batteries. Now, what you do, there's two kinds of negative green. Magnetic, which is horizontal wave. It's beneficial. Electrical, which is vertical and can be harmful. But John points out to me that therapeutically it can be useful. If you're trying to kill some pathogens, electrical negative green could be useful, but you don't want a lot of it. Okay. And pyramids, you see those little marks on the side of the pyramid? That eliminates the electrical negative green. You see the dome over there? What's it got on the top of it? A little gadget. That emits the vertical negative green. So you can, something, get it. So that's how this works. Okay. Now, I am going to start with this pendulum, which is part of the Egyptian pendulums. And this is Isis. How many here own an Isis? Oh, most of you, but some people don't, so I'll briefly. Okay. Isis is based on the ank. It's a 3D ank, and it emits white light. And white light means it emits all the colors above there, above the circle, all the colors of the rainbow. And Isis comes in different sizes. This is Isis. Okay. I'm going to get that. Isis comes in different sizes. The big one, Isis. And then we have this Isis here, which has six. Okay. And then I have a little Isis that's about a half an inch tall. And I, that half an inch tall one emits white light. I checked with my virtual call. Okay. Now, the number of these bands, you see the bands? Those are batteries. So if you have a big one with four batteries and a smaller one with six batteries, the six one works as fast. So the more batteries you have, the faster they work. But it's still emitting white light. And for those who haven't experienced ISIS, would you like to experience an ISIS? I can. Okay. Do you want to? John or someone, just put your hand up and okay, go. Yeah. This is gonna okay. All right, you can experience ISIS. Someone can pass them. Around. Someone can pass them around. Okay, now you can put ISIS over your hand, and you'll get a nice because your hand has everything in it, all your points. You can get a nice white light tune-up, or you can find a place which hurts. And what do you do with ISIS? What command, what command does ISIS respond to? Please emit. It's an emitter. E-M-I-T. It only emits energies, frequencies, this white light. If you don't need it, it doesn't spin. When it stops spinning, you say thank you. Okay. Now, where do you put the pendulum? Well, you can use ISIS as a yes or no pendulum. Ah. You can say, where should I put you? And look at your, you know, do a body scan. Or you can scan a paper outline. You can use an L rod to douse and find the place. Or you simply move ISIS around until you get a place where it spins. 
So if you've got a bad knee, put it over your knee. And uh, I went to Bosnia several times, and I met this man there, Thomas from Germany, and he had bad knees. So I gave him, I gifted him my ISIS. And he spun his ISIS over his knees for about every day, several times a day, for about three weeks, and he's able to run 10 miles again. So ISIS is very good for joint pain. My sister-in-law, she had swollen fingers, she had swollen fingers, she couldn't get her rings on, so I gifted her an ISIS. I can tell you I buy a lot of ISIS. Anyway, I gifted her an ISIS, and she spun it, and within a day, she could get her rings on. So then she bought a couple more, and now she treats all her friends in Virginia who have pain. So joint pain, ISIS is great. So I just passed that on. When you're driving, I, it took me five and a half hours to get here because I got lost on Route 4. How you get lost on Route 4 is another question. But anyway, I put my ISIS under my seat, under my driver's seat, just laid it down. And when I got here, I felt great. So ISIS is really good if you're driving. Stick it under the seat. Because ISIS emits even when it's not spinning, it emits. So uh, you can use it to put anything you want at food, house, drink, with white light. Okay, all right. Okay, now, I've done that. Okay, uh, I have recently received a, a photo of ISIS's energy. Now, there's a man named Harry Oldfield who lives in England and spends a lot of time in Australia. And he has invented first a, a device called a PIP camera, which takes photos of your energy fields, which are different than your R's. Then he invented the Oldfield filter, which you can put in front of your camera lens. And if you're out on a site, it will take photos of the energies of objects, people, and sites. And if you see Lorna Ra Raquel, who takes energy photos, what she's using is the Oldfield filter. And you put it in front. And John, John had experience with Harry because Harry had his Oldfield filter somewhere in Syracuse and it showed up the statue that had been moved and John could see the remnants of the statue in the place. And, this, and it picked it up. So the, the Oldfield filter is, uh, okay. Now Harry's invented an, something called an NEV camera. It's a Sony camera with an app, it's new apps, and it takes fo energy photos. And you can take photos, we've discovered, of these energy pendulums. Bogdan, the guy in. Sandy, yeah. I wanted to mention that um, you know, a lot of people are getting that aura camera picture taken. And um, it's only picking up one level or one dimension because it's a camera. And we're multi-level, multi-dimensional. Because I remember in one class with Harry, he had the lady up there with the, you know, $5,000 camera, you know, and it was seeing some colors and stuff. But what I was seeing, an etheric spear in her shoulder, it was huge from a past lifetime. And uh, I was hoping the camera would pick it up. So at the, during the break, I told her what I was seeing, and I was getting tired of looking at it. <laughs> I asked her if I could have permission to remove it, you know. So I had to remove it. So something to keep in mind that uh, the cameras are only going to get a certain level or dimension. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the ISIS, the wooden ISIS, taken with the NEV camera, and you see, you see all the. It's just it's lying down, and if you actually look at it on the camera, you can see all these. Things are pulsing, these energies. It's pulsing when it's lying down. So these are energetic objects. That's the NEV. Now, today I'm only covering ISIS because uh, we got this <laughs> bonus of John. So there are other pendulums in the Egyptian that Alicia sells. There's Mare Isis. I know some people here love Mare Isis. Uh, there's Osiris, which is masculine. And there's NOVA. Now, I'm not going to talk about NOVA today, what it does, but I'm just going to show you uh, an EV photo. <coughs> All right. That's this little pendulum called NOVA. It's not very big. It's bigger there than it is in reality. And inside, 
it's got a dome. Can you sort of see that? Can't see it there. I, you can't really see it there, but inside it has a structure shaped like this. Okay, and I'll show you the and, and it emits sparkles. How do I know? Because I show these pendulums to people, and someone said, "That's emitting sparkles." She's up there, and somebody else said, "Yeah." And every time I give this talk, when I spin Nova, there's at least a couple of people who can see the sparkles. So it emits. It emits. That's not the official line on it, but I can tell you. People see it emitting, so it brings sparkles to your life. Okay, but the Nova picture is abs. The no the NEV picture. Okay, this is my friend Bogdan. That, that's his hand. That's the Nova pendulum there, above it. And he just held it there. It wasn't spinning. Look what happens. Energetically. Just holding it there, it's merged with his hand. And I was interested in that little green and white dot in the Nova, and so I enlarged it. It looks like a little ET. And if you look at through the NEV, it's sparkling. It's really sparkling. Do you see the little white thing with the little... Yeah, that's the energy that's pulsing in that pendulum. So John can see, but this sort of also brings it out. So that's why I wanted to show you that these things really do they are energy pendulums. Okay, now, what I want to cover next is Mermit witness pendulums. How many of you know about witness pendulums? Okay, uh, this is a witness pendulum. Are uh, you see on the right? I can't find my big one, that's a big wooden one. What do you do with a witness pendulum? You unscrew the top. Why? Okay, well, I'll tell you. Okay. They have a hollow chamber, and you place a witness in there. How many people know what a wit don't? How many people know what a witness is? Okay, some of you don't. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. Okay. Now, first, let's go back. Mer these are called mermits because Abby Mermit was a Swiss monk, and he's one of the fathers of scientific radiesthesia, and he was a Jesuit as well. Now. When the Spanish went to Mexico, they're healers. And they have all these European herbs that they use. They're in Mexico. How do they do their healing in Mexico? Where they have Mexican herbs. Well, what they did was they put their European herb in the mermaid, put the top on, okay? And then they used the second command please detect, D-E-T-E-C-T. -E -E and if the stomach herb from Europe was in here and they go out with the shaman in Mexico and uh, they cozied up to them and uh, he shows you his herbs, they hold it over the various herbs and when they get to the stomach, the same herb with the same frequency for stomachs, what does Mermit do? It spins. So when you get a resonant frequency with what you've got in the witness chamber, it will spin in the detect mode. So it's very useful. And uh, that's, you can, put, you, you can put a symbol in it. You can put anything in it that you can get small enough. Or you can buy the big one. And my friend Suzanne, wanted, I forget what you wanted to put in, but she bought a big one. So you buy the one with the chamber that's big enough for what you want to put in it. So that's detect. But what else does it do? It emits. So if you want to do color therapy uh, and you douse the person needs red, you can put the red in here, a red piece of paper, and you can say, please emit, and it will emit red light at them. So whatever you put in the witness chamber, you can emit. You can emit it on someone that's there. If you do distant healing, you can do it over their photo, but, or you can do it any place. Uh, you could put your Tylenol tablet in it. You could put your ibuprofen tablet in it, painkillers, and tell it to emit, 
and it will emit the painkiller into your field. You don't have to take the pills. So witness pendulums, you can put your vitamins in it. Whatever's in it will emit into your field. Or you can spin it over water and say emit, and then you drink the water. So witness pendulums are a very important part of scientific radiothesia. Radionics the same thing. Yeah. It's somewhat, radionics is connected, okay? So, in the classes that I did on Egyptian pendulums, we were introduced to this pendulum called the Karnak. Where's my Karnak? Okay, I'll move the thing. That's Karnak on the left. It's another huge pendulum. And we were told it's useful for sort of dowsing your food. You can use it for telepathy. Alyssa used to communicate with her daughter in, in, in Toronto from Lindenville. So, okay. I don't do telepathy. But then in 2014, I discovered that Karnak had another name. Okay. It's known as the Egyptian, the Egyptian pendulum or Thoth. T-H-O-T-H. And when, in 2014, these three radiothesias from Italy came to the Dowsing Convention with Raymond Grace, I asked them what pendulum they used. And they all used Thoth. And it's the most popular pendulum in Europe. Everybody uses Thoth. So, me, I'm curious. So I bought two books in French from these folks in Belgium who publish all these books on Thoth. And I discovered that it had a third command. Absorb. Okay, absorb. So, instead of putting my painkiller in the witness pendulum, I take my Thoth pendulum, tap it to clear it, and I spin it over the ibuprofen and say, please absorb. And until I tap it again, so I broke my shoulder last summer, so I don't take painkillers, so I absorbed ibuprofen, and whenever I felt a twinge, and it cleared up all the pain. So you can absorb painkillers, you can absorb anything into Thoth and then emit or detect. Okay. Now, I didn't quite believe this business, so I always experiment. So I had two bottles of Bach flower remedies, which were very popular in England, and I held it Thoth over one of them, and I said, please absorb. And then I shuffled them around, and I told Thoth to detect the one I'd absorbed into it, and it, it always chose the one that I'd held it over and absorbed. So, because it had a resonant frequency between what I absorbed and what I was holding it over. So you can use it to detect, but the most important thing is you can use it to emit. Now, one of my, uh, so you can treat pain. Most of the members of my dowsing group in England are therapists, and in England you get free drug medicine when you're over 60. So everybody's over medicated. <laughs> and it's not working. So the clients come and they can't give them painkillers because they're already over medicated. So they've discovered again, that's where I first learned about this. You absorb the painkiller into your thoth and then you hold it over your pain point and it emits the painkiller in, into your field and the pain goes away. Another my member, she's an animal healer. She works on sick dogs all over Europe from England. So what she used to do was douse what they needed. So they needed a color and she'd send it to them. Then they needed a homeopathic remedy and she's, all these various things. She would send, send, douse, send, douse. Send. Then she figured out with Thoth, clear? The sequence. First she would absorb, let's say the dog needed the color green. She'd hold it over green and absorb the green. Then she'd hold it over the homeopathic remedy and put that in too. Then she'd put in all the things the dog needed, she stacked up in the Thoth. Then she connected to the dog, and what'd she say to Thoth? Please emit. 
and what we've discovered is once you load it into Thoth, you disconnect. Your left brain can be doing anything. Thoth would go around for like 10 minutes with the dog, and she's working on the next dog with her left brain. So your left brain is not involved. Thoth, load it up, it remembers, it emits. And of course she gets feedback, and dogs don't understand the placebo effect. Dogs don't do placebo effect, and she's getting fantastic feedback. The owners of the dogs the dogs are, and it's working, and it's so much more efficient. It works faster, she does more work. And I, yeah? Question? Yeah? Um, does it emit like the exact amount that your body needs? Yeah, it stops. It's like a, all the energy pendulums stop when you get what you needed. Okay, so you're supposed to take like two pills. You don't have to spin it over two pills, you spin it over. One pill, and when you get enough of that energy frequency, it will stop. They always stop when you do. And if you don't need it because you got the wrong pill, it won't spin either. Okay. <laughs> if you don't need it, it doesn't work. I mean, it doesn't spin. Okay. So last year I was here, and I was gifting thoughts to people and selling a few on the side. And um, I gave one to Dorothy Kirchner, who does the yoga. And she sent me an email saying it improved her yes and no dowsing. And I've had that feedback from a lot of people. You can use it as a, if you clear it, you can use it as a yes or no pendulum. And I was trying to figure out, why is this? Okay, the reason is because when you're thinking, if you hold it, when you're formulating your dowsing question, that whole thought form that's going on, Thoth remembers. So then when you ask your question, Thoth knows your whole thought form. And you know how when it's a complicated thing, your mind wanders? Well, because Thoth remembers, your mind doesn't, you don't have to stay so focused. So it really helps your yes or no dowsing. You hold it when you're formulating your question, and then you get better answers. So it's a fantastic pendulum. Okay, and uh, uh, people infuse it with beneficial thought forms and emit them over photos of people. And where's Susan? Anyway, she's not here. She's in Spout, Bar Corner. Uh, that's what she does. So all sorts of therapists use them to just emit. Okay, and you clear it by tapping. So that is thought, and that is, this absorb command is like amazing. And uh, that's why I got this book and I go like, absorb. And what's the word in French for absorb? Absorbe. It's absorb, I can read it. <laughs> anyway, so that is my, Thoth pendulums are my real enthusiasm because you can use them for mental dowsing, you can use them for just about everything you want to do with all the other pendulums. So, so yeah. yeah. Bring in beneficial thought forms. I understand how you can bring in, you know, absorb meditation. Or you, you hold it and you, and you spin it and you say, uh, please absorb. Instead of absorbing what's down there, you say, please, uh, I want to infuse this pendulum with love and light and what's best for them and spin it and thoth knows